Barbara, how is the state's high rate of meth impacting Hoosiers? Well, Joe, when meth is smoked or cooked, dozens of toxic chemicals are released into the air that cling to every surface. That means thousands of properties in the Hoosier state are contaminated. And many families don't think about that danger when buying a home. <laughs> Playing catch in the living room of a rental house isn't exactly what Jennifer Nugent had planned for her family. She wanted to raise her kids somewhere with plenty of space to play. And for a while, she was. Back in 2013, Nugent and her husband bought their dream home in the small community of Mooresville. It sat on two and a half acres in a peaceful neighborhood. It was blue and it had um, a, just a lot of potential for us to add on and we really, really wanted that house. <laughs> but shortly after they moved in, they started living a nightmare. Our kids, you know, were just constantly, it seemed like had the flu and um, they were throwing up at least weekly. Nugent couldn't figure out what was causing their ongoing health problems until a neighbor spoke up, mentioning the previous homeowner referred to the bathroom as a smoke shop. That's when Nugent ordered a $50 meth test. The results were staggering. The first test indicated meth three times the legal limit. I was stunned. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't believe that my kids were having to inhale this. The Mooresville home is one of thousands contaminated by meth in the state. Since 2007, state police have busted 11,000 meth labs. There is a public online database that lists all of those properties, but it only includes meth labs police know about. In order to be removed from the list, the properties must be cleaned by a state-approved qualified inspector. But that doesn't always happen. If you look at the numbers of properties versus the numbers that have been properly cleared by a qualified inspector, you're talking an eight to 9,000 house difference, and I don't believe that all of those are sitting empty. Legislators passed a law last year that aims to protect families from unknowingly buying a meth home. Just like checking a box to indicate whether a property has lead paint or asbestos, homeowners must disclose whether the property is contaminated by meth but the law depends on the honesty of the seller. Now I field a lot of calls from realtors wanting to know if a property has been cleaned or cleared because people aren't wanting to tell the truth. Bedford-based crisis cleaning performs meth tests and decontaminates homes. It's become their most in-demand service. We've done some million dollar homes, so it, it's surprising. A lot of people might assume that you know, you, you're buying a big, beautiful home and, you know, it, there's no way there's meth there, but you'd be shocked. Cleaning those properties can cost up to tens of thousands of dollars, so some people just don't bother. That leaves behind toxic chemicals. There's a lot of risks, particularly for the small children, uh, those with weak immune system or the elderly, especially small children who might crawl on the ground, um, put their hands in their mouths. There can be rashes, there can be headaches, there can be vomiting. That's why Nugent moved her family into this rental home, even after having the Mooresville house decontaminated. It devastated me to know that we put them in that home. They sold the house, but at a significant loss, a painful ordeal Nugent says could have been avoided if the seller complied with Indiana's disclosure law. You're relying on a criminal to disclose his criminal acts to a buyer and lose the sale, you know, and so you, I just, I don't think that's enough. She wants Indiana to strengthen its laws and require meth tests be performed on all properties that are up for sale. It's a $50 test, she says, could save other families from serious health and financial problems. You're already spending hundreds on the inspection, 50 more dollars just guarantees you've got a safe home. The Nugent family is taking legal action against the former homeowner and the realtor. The realtor happens to be that previous homeowner's mother, Joe. Very interesting. Thank you.